Hey, this is Josh, and this channel is called Powder and Mohair. Um, the goal of this channel is to discuss backcountry skiing and some other outdoor pursuits. Obviously, some of that's going to be seasonally dependent. Uh, my inspiration for starting this channel was a trip that I recently planned to Japan. Uh, the primary focus was skiing. Obviously, did some cultural stuff. Got to get out and eat a lot of Japanese food and wander around uh, some Japanese cities, which is really exciting. Um, the goal of this video specifically is to explore how to budget for a big trip, kind of like the one that I just went on. Um, and the goal of the, some upcoming videos I've got is uh, kind of how to plan for the trip. Uh, where you can get your food, uh, skiing, some of the culture you might be interested in, as well as the transportation. Um, the trip was a, a big success and I think I can share some things that went well and some things that I probably could have improved on. Um, the budget's a first step. Also soon to come is some um, recordings of skiing from Japan, which of course is probably the most exciting part. This is the Google Sheet I used to plan my trip to Japan on. First thing I'd like to say about uh, using Google Sheets or Excel to plan a trip is when you make a budget and you start doing research using uh, places like uh, Kayak.com or Google was a really important one. Uh, just looking up different things in Japan. Um, starting with a budget and planning into your budget really opens your eyes as to what you're going to need to think about. I didn't use a travel agent to plan this at all. Um, I didn't really have any friends that had done anything like this before that I could depend on to say, hey, this is a good idea or this is a bad idea. And so realistically, I was just left to the internet and my planning skills to make sure this was a successful trip. And so making a budget on sheets was a great way for me to see like, hey, if I thought of what I need to have for transportation to get from this place to this place. Uh, do I have a place to stay for this night or in this location? Um, what am I going to need to spend on skiing or food or this or that? And so when you're putting together a budget, you kind of look at all those different things and it helps you to fill in the blanks as far as what you need. And for me, I had kind of a fixed limit limit that I wanted to spend when I was planning this whole thing. It was months out, because if you're going to do a good job planning a trip like this, you do need to start months out most of the time. And the number I was really stuck on was uh, $6,000. So if you look at this grand total here in uh, row 22, you'll see that my grand total ended up being $5,821.68. Now, I'd like to clarify, I suppose those are U.S. dollars, as is everything on this budget. Um, and to be honest, one could easily spend more than that by a lot, I mean, almost infinitely, or less than that by perhaps a thousand dollars. It'd be hard to tighten this up much more than, than it is, but possible. So... Let's start talking about the uh, airfare. And I'm not going to get too into the weeds with regards to the planning or where I went to plan because I want to save that for a different video. But I hunted and hunted and hunted, and this is airfare for two people. So it was a little bit more than uh, $1,300 a person for tickets from Denver to Tokyo. And then once we're in Japan, you can ride a train pretty much anywhere. And you can find some skiing that's really close to Tokyo. But I wanted to go up to northern Japan. And uh, it, the most efficient way to move up to northern Japan, if I wasn't going to visit any other place, was by plane. And so once again, this is two plane tickets for me and my wife to fly from Tokyo up to a city in northern Japan. Which I'm not super keen on revealing at this point in time. Um... And I may or may not do that in the future. The last thing is, it's important to understand, in uh, the course of my plan, I found out that most of the international flights land in and fly out of Narita Airport, 
which is uh, outside of Tokyo. And most of the domestic flights fly in and out of the Haneda Airport, which is on the other side of Tokyo. And so I needed to figure out a way to get from one airport to the other. And once again, a uh, subway train sort of method would be feasible to get from one airport to the other, although it would require probably at least three trains. I didn't do a ton of research into it, but I think you'd have to at least make three transitions from one train to the next to get from one of those airports to the other. But there's also uh, a different thing called uh, Japanese, or uh, was it Japan limo bus, I think it was called. And uh, for $30 a person, you were able to travel um, from one airport to the other in an hour and a half bus ride. Super simple, didn't have to carry your luggage onto and off of trains. It was a good way to go. And once again, that's through some research on Google. And I'll spend some more time, as I said before, in another video talking to you about that. And so that came up for the total air transportation, including this Internet Airport Transport, to uh, cost $3,426.43. Obviously, the bulk of the grand total was in airfare. So, I just want to show you something really quick. How to take the sum of three numbers. Because you know, these spreadsheets are really powerful tools. Uh, Excel and Google Sheets both are. Excel probably has more functions in it. But as far as uh, transport, transportability, uh, Google Sheets, I would say, cannot be beat. So let's say we have uh, three numbers, one, two, and three. And they're in three sales uh, stacked on top of each other. Obviously, you can look at these three numbers and say, oh, look, the sum is six. However, that's not how it always is. I mean, if you look at these three numbers, you could math them out in a calculator or do longhand arithmetic. But one of the things, one of the functions that you have on both Excel and Google Sheets is the sum function. So to take the sum of three numbers or more, any numbers, just a stack of them, you hit the equal sign, S-U-M. If you're in uh, Excel, it would have to be in all caps. And you can type in your different values, like uh, this is F4. So you'd be F4, comma, or the easier way to do it is just to grab and drag F4 to F6 shows up just like this. Close the parenthesis, hit enter, and you know that the sum of those numbers is 6. Now just for organization purposes, you notice I have bolded any of my uh, tab titles as well as the total amount in each category because uh, if you look at the stack of three numbers, that 6 doesn't stand out very much. Even though it's the sum, as seen up here in this box, it doesn't stand out very much compared to those three numbers. So just using some bold features is a good way to organize your um, spreadsheet. The second thing on the list is, is lodging. Uh, when I was looking at the flights, it seemed most reasonable to fly into and out of Tokyo on separate days. Uh, domestically versus internationally. So I'd fly in on an international flight, spend the night, the next morning fly out from Haneda Airport, and then on the way back it was kind of the reverse of the problem, process. Fly out or fly into Haneda Airport into Tokyo in the evening and fly out the next afternoon slash evening as you're flying in and out of the United States to Tokyo, vice versa. You usually will fly in the afternoon from one place to the other. Um, so once again, I needed another uh, hotel in Tokyo before I headed out. That just gave me some buffer time where if something happened and my transportation was to fall through from the town in Japan that I was in, that yeah, I had an extra 24 hours to play with to try to figure out how am I going to make it down to Tokyo to catch my flight. Um, and so in Tokyo, I spent two nights for $183 in a decent hotel room. And once again, when I was in northern Japan, I spent seven nights for $444.72. And then once again, I used my sum feature function to get this value of $627.74.
Now, early on in the planning process, I was looking at my food, and uh, this is a good place to save money. I only had six thousand dollars I wanted to spend, and a good place to cut costs was actually to use a grocery store to get groceries and cook for myself. And eating out was important to me, but but secondary. So I figured, oh well, I can eat out two meals a day, and eat breakfast on a grocery budget for the third meal for the day, and that would be a good way to save money. And uh, two things are interesting, as it turns out. Number one, my budget worked out as the date of departure approach I had more money in the bank than I thought I would, and so as a result, I was able to eat out more which was nice, but also, um, honestly, grocery, or uh, breakfast in Japan is not a meal you need to save that much money for. Um, I found that between my wife and myself, we were able to eat a good breakfast for $10, and that's not each, that's just for the two of us, $10 for the two of us, coffee and some, some French pastries. That being said, I would encourage you to find some French bakeries while you're in Japan. This seems counterintuitive, but they are absolutely fantastic. So, the total of those, once again, I use the sum feature, probably not as useful in this category as some of the others. And uh, 50 and 420 added up to be $470. So, last thing, this is kind of a miscellaneous category that I could have broken up in a multiple, but it was two different ski areas, which, like the city, I'm not too keen on sharing at this point in time, and that might change in the future. And rental car and gas to go with that rental car. So these two values were much higher than I actually ended up needing to spend to ski at these locations, which was nice. And the rental car price was a little cheaper on the budget than it ended up being in real life, but gas was entirely I budgeted five times the money I needed. I spent probably $30 on gas refilling the car before I dropped it off at the rental place. It was super cheap. Super cheap driving around Japan. And that's not to say that gas is cheap in Japan, but things are pretty close together, and the vehicles are very fuel efficient. Um, so once again, I use the sum feature to get this total. And then I have my grand total. Now this is an interesting value because obviously you can't just take the sum of all of these because once you put these totals in for each category, it's going to mess up your grand total if you were just to take the sum of the column. So I'm going to show you how I did that. There's multiple ways. One way is to hit equal sum, open parenthesis, click on a total, hit control, click on another total, control, another total, control, another total. Those are all of my grand totals for each of my categories. Close my parenthesis off and hit enter and you'll see that these two values are equal to each other. Um, and another way to do it is just basic math function. So you hit equal sign, click on one thing, hit the plus sign, click on another thing, plus sign, click, plus, click, enter, and the result is the same. Uh, looks like for this one, if you look up toward the top, I did use the sum function, but completely irrelevant. Now obviously as the trip progressed, or the planning progressed, I would spend money. And so the, the areas I ended up spending money uh, first on were flights and hotels. And so those flights and hotels uh, added together ended up being uh, $3,984.89 before I ever left. And so I look at internet or uh, inter airport transportation and I look at my rental car and skiing and groceries and eating out and those sorts of things. Those are expenditures that don't occur until you're actually in country. Um, and you can probably get by with not getting hotels until you're in country, but I'm kind of a worry wart and I plan pretty hard. And so those are things I did end up buying. But before I left, I spent this much money and then had this much money to spend while I was in Japan. 
including the rental car. And so throughout the course of your budget, you might want to keep a running total of what's going on. And so to do that, what you're going to do is you'll see that my paid, how much money I've paid, is just a number up here in my function box. Um, obviously, that's fluid, so there's no math that goes into that other than what you've spent. And then the final part is the remainder. The remainder is just the difference between your grand total and what you paid. So to get that number, what you're going to do is just the equal sign, grand total, minus your paid box, and hit enter, and then it should match up with the number that I have there. It does. Um, and the nice thing about this is any numbers you enter into this point, so let's say, you know what, I spent $38 on gas. I change it from 150 to 30 and hit enter. You'll see what happens is these numbers all change to match correspondingly. So keep an eye on the remainder or keep an eye on the grand total. I'll switch back to 150, hit enter. Both those values update themselves correspondingly. That's the key to having these functions in your Excel spreadsheet or in your uh, Google Sheet is if you're using these functions correctly, you can update things as they change. So when I was looking at airfare, I was budgeting out what I thought it was going to cost. And then as I, when I actually bought my tickets, that price did not match what I had budgeted for. I think I had budgeted for $3,000 and ended up being $2,741. And so once you get hard prices, you can update your budget and your grand total will update as will your remainder because your paid will update as well. So just keep those things in mind while you're planning and remember that using a spreadsheet can be a really important tool for filling in the blanks. It'll help you to think of all the things you maybe didn't think of before you started the planning process and that's really helpful, especially if you're not having any outside assist, uh, assistance planning your trip. So good luck. Hopefully this video was useful to you. And remember to ski hard and take risks. Don't forget to subscribe.